How many lies have you told in your life? None in business. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yeah, that's bad. You're bad. You keep bringing all the negative in the Bible when there's so much positive in the Bible. Thank you. There you go. Stop following him. He's fake. Tell me, what are your thoughts on the afterlife? Um, honestly, I kind of don't really believe in the afterlife. I kind of think that we just are put here and then we kind of just become one with the earth again. Isn't that depressing? I don't think so. <laughs> if you give your best in this life, then you will get your best in the next life. Who's in charge of this? Uh, the universe. God. The universe. God in the universe? God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. Whatever is your higher power. So what do you think of the first of the Ten Commandments? Do you remember what that is? Well, <laughs> yes, I do remember what that is. Do you remember? Tell me what it is. No, you say it. I, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. In other and words, if you say I am God as well. I am God. God is within me. I am God. We are one. You think you're God? We are God. We are all God. God is within all of us. A man approaches you on the street, you don't know him, but he says, we want to make a snuff movie. Do you know what a snuff movie is? Uh, isn't that when, like, you get murdered or something? Yeah, they want to kill you on camera. They'll shoot you through the heart. It'll be quick. But your, your relatives will get $10 million cash. Would you give up your life? What would you give in exchange for your life? Money? No. <laughs> so your life is real precious to you? Yes. So if there's one chance in a million there is an afterlife and you could find everlasting life, shouldn't you soften your heart instead of saying, no, I don't believe in anything and, and just search it out? Have you ever read the Bible? Sometimes. Do you believe in God's existence? Uh, I don't know what I believe in. <laughs> well, you did say before to me that we were put here. So there's got to be a putter if we were put. Now tell me, how do I get to heaven? What's the way to heaven? What do I have to do? <sighs> Just be you. Be real. Don't be. Just be me. Don't. Be Are you in? No. Your heart, then you're not going to go to heaven. Have you ever been in a hotel and read the instructions behind the door in case of fire? Ever studied those? And what does it say? In case of fire, do this. It says get low, because if you breathe in when you're standing up and it's on fire, you're going to breathe in carcinogens, and it's going to kill you within seconds. And you've got to study the way out. You've got to know the exit. So knowledge can save your life. The Bible says, my people are destroyed through lack of knowledge. And a lot of people end up in hell because they lack knowledge. Do you know what the world calls death? No. It's called the Grim Reaper. Oh, OK, yeah. And they show pictures of him standing right behind you with a sickle waiting to cut you down. So death is terrifying for all of us. And some people admit it, and you've been humble enough to admit it. So why don't you listen to your fear of death and say, man, if there's an answer, I should really look into it. Do you believe the Bible? Uh, portions. Okay, see if you believe this portion. Have you ever heard the wages of sin is death? Ever heard that verse? No. Yeah, it's uh, Romans 6.23, and it's saying that death is wages that God is paying you in for your sins. The wages of sin is death. Sin is so serious to God that he's given you the death sentence. It's like a judge looks at a criminal who's murdered three young ladies after he raped them, and he says, you've earned the death sentence. This is what's due to you. This is what we're paying you. This is your wages. And sin is so serious to God, he's given us the death sentence. Do you think you are so evil that God is justified to put you to death for your sins? Well, are you a good person? I think so. So you're going to make it to I heaven? I am a good, good person. Okay, I'm going to put that to the test. How many lies have you told in your life? None of your business that's God's business next question have you ever stolen something I don't read yeah when I was young yes I did have you ever used God's name in vain yeah <laughs> would you use your mother's name as a cuss word Janet yes but it'd be a horrible thing to do wouldn't it to exchange her name for a four-letter word we use to describe something disgusting to use her name in the place of a cuss word and yet you've done that with the name of God, the holy name of God, that godly Jews won't even speak, let alone even write down because it's so holy, but you've exchanged it for a filth word to express disgust. Do you know why people do that? Filler. A filler? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's an interesting answer. Yeah, that's what it means to take it in vain. It means nothing, it's just a filler. 
It's not worthy of any respect or any honor. Now we're going to go personal, so hang in there. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust at a guy? Yeah, but it's not my fault if I don't know if he's married or not. It's irrelevant if they're married or not. If you look with lust... You're, you, well, you know, well, God shouldn't have given me lust in my heart if he didn't want me to look for it. You can't blame him. Husband in that aspect. You can't blame him. I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming you for asking the question. Next question. Oh, so I take it that you have lied. You're like the rest of us. You've said things that aren't true in your life. So I'm going to give you a quick summation. I'm not judging you, Christy, but you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate mm -hmm. heart. And you've got to face God on Judgment Day. And this is where we're going with this. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four of them, on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Well, it seems that I have sinned a lot. Innocent. Why? He died on the cross for my sins. And everything I do, I can wake up the next day and ask for forgiveness and do better every single day. But I'd be guilty on Judgment Day. All of humanity be guilty. There's nobody innocent. So we'll burn you to hell. Well, the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. This is what you're doing right now. You're picking all the bad things out of the gospel, and then you're trying to take that to pull people down. That's bad. You're bad. That's not good. That's not what the Bible is for. Well, that's what Jesus did in Mark 10, verse 17. Someone says, how can I get everlasting life? Jesus said, you know the commandments. You know why we need the commandments? To bring the knowledge of sin. I need your attention. It's like that notice on the back of the door in the hotel that tells you how to get out, go low, and look for the exit. It's so important, Christy. So irritating. It's, it is irritating, but I for know. a doctor to give someone a cure, he's got to talk about the disease. And to understand that Christ died for us, we need the knowledge that we've sinned against him. We need to know we're sinners heading for hell, or we won't repent and trust in him. You're right about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. We violated God's law, the Ten Commandments, and Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. He defeated death. And the good news of the gospel is if you repent and trust in him, God will grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Nothing more positive, nothing more wonderful than the gospel. And that's where I was heading. It's like if you're in a court of law and someone pays you fine, even though you're guilty, a judge can let you go. He can say, Chelsea, there's a stack of speeding fines here, but someone's paid him. You're out of here and can do that, which is legal and right and just. You walk because someone paid you fine. And even though you and I are guilty before God, worthy of the death sentence and damnation, Jesus came and paid our fine in full, expressing God's love for you and I and satisfying justice. God can legally let you live forever. He can take the death sentence off you. He can take the sickle out of the hand of the grim reaper because of what Jesus did on the cross through his death and resurrection. What you must do, and it's so simple a child can understand it, is repent and trust alone in Jesus. Turn from sin and trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. If you're going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, why would you put on a parachute? To save your life. <laughs> save your life. You want to keep it. And fear is your motivation. And what I've tried to do because I care about you is put the fear of God in you today, hoping that you'll see fear as your friend, not your enemy. If you put on a parachute because of fear, that fear is doing you a great favor. And if you come to Christ because you fear God and fear, fear losing your soul, losing your life, that's a good motive. You keep bringing all the negative in the Bible when there's so much positive in the Bible. So focus on the positive and not the negative. Jesus warned himself that many on the day of judgment will say, Lord, Lord, we did many wonderful things in your name. And then he said, I'll say to them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. So make sure you have the fruits that accompany salvation, that you're genuinely saved, because there's certain evidences that will come out. And One more question for you. What? What? You just blasphemed the name of Jesus. Did you hear He's that? He's right there for me. I can do whatever the I want to do. Here's my question. Oh, here we go. When did you last read your Bible? I have it sitting on my nightstand. I read it every single day. You do? Yeah. Do you obey it? What do you mean, do I obey it? Well, Jesus I said. Obey, uh, I don't obey a book. I obey myself. I obey my life. I obey God. And I'm very spiritual. Yes, I obey that. I help so many people and I contribute to foundations. What do you do in life? What do you do? Let me ask you that. Who do you help besides taping all these videos? Do you ask God on a daily basis, who can I work for? Who can I give to? Obviously you don't because it's you and all your video cameras. How many women and children have you saved? Zero. I've been very colorful. I, I want to thank you very much You're for welcome. talking. Thank you. There you go. Stop following him. He's fake. So put your faith in Jesus and you've got God's promise and he cannot lie because he's without sin. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. 
You've got God's promise he'll give you everlasting life as a free gift. Do you think I'm telling the truth? I think that everybody is supposed to believe in what they want to believe. So what do you believe? Do you believe I'm telling the truth? I think you're telling your truth. Yeah, but it's the gospel truth. I wouldn't lie to you. So in other words, you're saying to me, you're not really interested in this gift of everlasting life that God is giving. Is that right? I don't want to live forever. <laughs> you wouldn't even think for a second of letting someone take your life for $10 million. Your life, what would you give in exchange for your life? Money? No. <laughs> so your life is real precious to you? Yes. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You don't know this, but my motive for talking to you today is because I care about you. The thought of you going to hell terrifies me, it takes my breath away, it's horrific. If death seized upon you tonight and God gave you justice, that would make me weep in my heart, seriously. And so my motive for, for talking to you like this is because I care about you. And I'm going to ask you one question and I'll let you go. Chelsea, are you going to think about what we talked about today? Of course. Going to think about it seriously? Not insanely seriously, but I'll see, revisit. <laughs> let me see if I can get you to the insanely seriously. Imagine you were going to die tonight. There's only one who knows the moment of your death, and that's God. And God had me talking like this because He knew that tonight your soul is required of you and that you're going to have an aneurysm, God forbid, in your sleep, heart attack. You would think about what we're talking about if you believe that to be so. You would grab it with both arms and say, oh, I've got to find everlasting life because God's given you a will to live. You're not a beast. You're not, you're not some dog or a cat. You're a human being made in His image, and there's something in you that says, oh, I don't want to die. So please listen to that today. Will you do that for me? I have listened very carefully. The Evidence Bible is a reservoir overflowing with everything evangelistic. I couldn't recommend it more highly. It's what you need to defend and share your faith. Franklin Graham said, In a day when Christians are too often silenced by the questions of skeptics, the Evidence Bible will help you be prepared to give an answer. Also commended by Christian leaders such as Josh McDowell, D. James Kennedy, Tim LaHaye, Norman Geisler, and Ken Ham. This study Bible comes in soft as well as hard cover. As Kirk said, it's everything you've ever wanted to know about apologetics and reaching the lost, including 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. It will arm you with practical training on evolution, atheism, the teachings of Mormons, Hindus, Muslims, and Jehovah's Witnesses, and much more. including how to effectively, lovingly, and logically share the truth of the gospel. You'll find that it's hundreds of inspiring quotes from the famous, and its practical tips on defending the faith will be a great encouragement. Go to livingwaters.com, click on Store, Books, and then the Evidence Study Bible.